Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. But oh, now can you can see it. just begin to see it in the west. Uh, it, it's really a shadow. It's a flat oh, shadow this is coming so cool. through the air. <laughs> I, I, even I am excited by this. This gives me goosebumps. It's like a little flat wedge coming in. Isn't that amazing? And it's going to fly a thousand feet. Can't hear a thing, can you, Bob? No. Oh, my Look gosh. Look at that. Look he's, at that. He's, uh, He's doing uh, maneuvers. Now, there's a tower there that really is rather That's high. one of our KTLA <laughs> cameras right there. They seem to know exactly what Look they're doing. Look at this. I certainly hope they do because they're ever so close to oh, us. The excitement in the audience is just incredible. Oh, they do spot it. Yeah, everybody has spotted it now. All faces are oh, turned in that direction. My gosh, it looks gosh. like it's coming right at us. Look at this. <laughs> I'm curious about the horses that are down on the... Orange it's Grove, look so at this. Quiet. Oh. Celebrating the 50th anniversary of the United States Air Force. Ooh. Oh. You know, my my legs are weak. That was so I've never so seen anything emotional. like that in my life. Woo. Nobody is cynical at this moment. This is absolutely that remarkable. It was definitely an exciting moment, not only for Stephanie and Bob, but for all of us as well. And whether you saw it in person or watched it on TV, when that huge, strange looking B 2 stealth bomber flew over the Rose Parade, it got your adrenaline pumping. Some people even broke out in chills. Now I was at the Rose Parade this year, and the moment that B-2 flew over me, I decided that I wanted to see one of those Star Wars looking planes up close. I had absolutely no idea how I'd pull something like that off. But I decided right then and there that my New Year's resolution was to find a B-2 bomber. And to start our adventure, to start our journey, to start our quest in search of an honest-to-goodness B-2 stealth bomber, we have come out here to the Chino Airport in San Bernardino County. We are visiting the Plains of Fame Museum. It is a beautiful, sunny California morning. And we are here because if you're going in search of the B-2, you need to start with this plane first. It's very unusual, it's one of a kind, and here to tell us about it is our welcoming committee. I didn't know we were gonna have quite an entourage like this. Yeah. How do you do? Good morning. Hey, Ron Your Hackworth. name? Ron Hackworth. I'm Bruce Hines. Morning, Bruce. Bob Merriman. Bob. Brian Provost. Good morning, sir. Dick Horst. Good morning, thank you all for getting up you. this <laughs> early in the morning. My pleasure. Tell us about this airplane and why it's important that we be here first before we actually try to see a B-2 stealth bomber. Well, this is the, uh, this is the genesis. This, this is the only surviving Northrop uh, flying wing model from, from the early Northrop wing models. This was uh, the prototype for the B-35. It's the only surviving uh, model that actually flies. The Smithsonian has an N1M and that's it. That's all there is. Uh, now this, when were these things produced by Northrop? This airplane flew in 1945. Flying wing was unlike any aircraft that had yet been developed. It had no fuselage, no long central body such as were to be found on all other aircraft. It had no tail, no orthodox vertical fin or rudder, no horizontal stabilizers or elevators as were found on ordinary airplanes. It was purely and simply a long, slippery looking wing. It's a very unusual looking plane, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, a lot of the characteristics of the B-2 come right off this. You know, back in the early days, uh, 
they use scale models, you know, rather than building uh, full-size models. And this is a third scale of the original flying wings. Oh, okay. So this is really just a third the size of the old flying wings. That's this was kind of like a, a test model. Yeah, it's a test model. You can think of it as a big wind tunnel model. They use the big wind tunnel in the sky. They developed the flight controls, like the split rudders and the elevons, flap systems, uh, power system. They developed that for the big flying wing and uh, use this as, uh, as a prototyping model uh, for that. So there are no actual flying wings, the full-size flying wings, left, are there? No, unfortunately, they uh, chopped them all up. At the end of the, end of the contract, they said, let's get rid of all these big flying wings and, uh, and chopped them up and melted them down. There were about 20, 25 uh, of well, them made? Yeah, it was something in that neighborhood. Was, and there were about four or five of these models made? Four of these and nines. And this, oh boy, look at this, Louie. Look at this shot looking down here. Yeah, isn't that nice? What well, a, a lot of wing area. The yeah. lines on this thing. Yeah. yeah. Even uh, for somebody who's not into aviation as much as you are, just to look at this, this is amazing. Yeah. Well, we all think Jack Northrop was absolutely right. You know, the big wing uh, really increases efficiency, and it's, it's the way to go. And I, I think you're seeing that on new, new airplanes now. You're seeing a lot bigger wing areas where they get better, better performance. And, and better now both airplanes. of you fellows have flown this actual plane right here. What's it like when you're up in this thing? Well, it's uh, it, 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 you kind of a little bit overcome by the nostalgia of it. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's very impressive when you think of what you're fortunate enough to actually be in. But aside from that, it's a it's a, it's a pleasure to fly. It, uh, you feel uh, somewhat like a seagull, you know, more of a graceful thing. It's not a real snappy uh, fighter. It doesn't have a big roll rate. Uh, doesn't do a lot of things real fast, but it's very graceful. And it it, it uh, you feel uh, you feel that as you're flying. Yeah. It. Well, basically, it's just a big wing up in the That's sky. Right. Yeah, I've got sort of a funny story. The first time I saw the plans on the B-2 after they came and got me. It was a very classified program then. Of course, they took me in a, in a room and, and showed me the mock-up, and I looked at it, you know, looked at the big wing, and then looked farther down, and I said, geez, haven't you guys forgot something? <laughs> tail. <laughs> tail, right? <laughs> but uh, but it, it you know, proved that it's a very good flying airplane. Really, I didn't expect planes. it to be yellow. Is this the color it originally was? Yeah, they had several paint schemes, but basically it's blue on the bottom and yellow on the top, so they could sort of tell which side is up. You know, oh, when they're looking okay. at. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So the bottom of it is blue, the top of it is yellow, and when you see it coming at you, it really does look like a line in the sky. That's right. Yeah, and that's that's the whole idea of uh, visibility and stealth is it's sort of a flat plate and very hard for a radar to, to pick up or visually to pick up for that wow. for that matter. Yeah. Well, Jack Northrop, the man who was responsible for this thing, and here's, Louis, the name of Northrop right here on the front, really was a visionary, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, he? yeah. He, uh, he was way ahead of his time. I think everybody will agree on that. And without getting into the long story, the idea was these flying wings were developed back in the late 1940s. And then the kibosh was put on them. All of them were cut up and destroyed. And it was apparently the end of his dream to have a flying wing until 30, 40 years later the B-2 comes back right, right. as a much bigger, much more complex, much more mm -hmm. uh, designed feature of what this original little prototype was all about. You bet. That's that's uh, absolutely true. You know, and I think uh, I think the B-2 is coming around. You know, where it's really uh, proven its point. I think it's uh, you know wonderful system and. It'll be around for a long time. So <laughs> that beautiful big B-2 that we all saw at the Rose Parade started with this back in the 1940s. That's right. And this That's is right. one of the last, well, there are only two of them. One of them's here at the Chino Airport at the Plains of Fame Museum. The other is in the Air and Space Museum at the Smithsonian in Washington. And this one flies. And this one flies. <laughs> right. You've flown it. You've flown it. You all put it together. Right. Jack Northrop flew in it. Really? A number of times. In yeah. this plane? Yes. Wow. In the old yeah. days. Well, this has been a great first stop on our search. Louie, let's get everybody, let's all get around here in front of this wonderful big old plane. 
This is where we should have come to start our journey, right? That's correct. <laughs> now, just get us fired up because we're getting ready to head out in search of a B-2. Is it going to be worth our, uh, is there going to be a payoff at the end of the tunnel here? I think so, but uh, you know, it's a stealthy airplane, so you'll have a tough time finding it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's not going to stop us. Louie and I are hitting the road. Uh, we're not going to go today. We're going to start off uh, tomorrow morning early, and we're heading out in search of the relative. I guess the grandson, would you call it? I or? think, you could, I think you'd call it that. Of the original flying wing, we're going to start off in the morning and we're going to find that darn thing. I don't care if it is stealthy. <laughs> well, good luck. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you very, Thank you. very much. Great. Thank you. Hilo. Thank nice you. For coming down. An absolutely beautiful and very historic airplane, the flying wing, out here at the Plains of Fame Museum in Chino. Next morning, it's early and it's raining, but we're on the road heading up the 5 to the 14 on our way to the Northrop facility where they actually make the B-2s. Now by the time we got there, it had stopped raining and after we got lost for a while driving around the huge Northrop parking lot, we finally located our designated parking spot got ready to go inside on what turned out to be a top security adventure. It's not easy to find a B-2. Okay, now we're out of the car and we've, we've run into our first little barrier here. Caution, cellular phones, cameras, film, video cassettes, recorders, audio and video tapes, radios, computer media and laptop computers may not be brought into this facility. Good morning. Hi. Well, what are we supposed to do? That's a camera. You're having special authorization today. You'll be guarded at all times by our security manager to make sure that uh, you don't film anything you shouldn't film. Have you done a security background check on both of us? <laughs> that has, the security check has gone in. <laughs> and yeah. we passed it? I think so. They said you could come in. <laughs> OK, so what have we got? Little badges here? We have badges here? to wear while you're here on site. OK, there's one for me and one for Louie. That's it. Well, let's go. Let's go. U.S. Air Force plant number 42, site number 4, 1986. 1986. All right. We're going inside. Come in. I got your badge, Louie. Okay, we're getting the once over. That's just uh, tapes and batteries for the camera. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I feel like we're going into Fort Knox here. Maybe tighter. <laughs> Okay, you don't need to frisk us or anything? No, sir, no, sir. I'm going to turn you over to your escorts, Chris oh. and Joe Moore. Okay, now this, we've picked up another escort here. An escort, Chris Edgar, and I'll be taking you back into the room for your briefing. Nice to meet you, sir. Joe Moore, I'm the security manager here in Palmdale. A lot of security here. <laughs> yes, it's the government requirement, and it's a very tight security that we've had for many years here. Okay, now where are we going? Can we keep the camera on for a minute? We can keep the camera on, and we're going back to our plant visitor center. Okay, Plant Visitor Center. Now, what does that mean? Well, we, we host a lot of visitors and meetings here, and we've got one room specifically set up, and it's... Wait a minute, there's this sign again. Another warning about not having any cameras here. That's right. We're making a special exception just oh. for you. Program badge required. Oh, boy. I feel like some kind of an alarm is getting ready to go off. Well, there is one going off right now. Really? Yeah. It's an alarm right here on this door to tell us that the door has been entered. Okay, here's another sign, Louie, about not being able to bring your camera in here. <laughs> now we're in the... Oh, boy, here we are. We're just glad to be here. I'm Bill Lawler, sir. Good morning. Good morning, morning. Scott Seymour, how do you do? Good Pleased morning. To meet you. Ed Smith, nice to meet you. Good Finally morning. Again. Don't worry, we're going to cut the camera off in just a second. <laughs> okay. I know that's what's first in your mind, right? No, 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 no. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> well, uh, but we do have to cut the camera off right now, don't we? We're going to have a, some you, kind you of a briefing? To, you have to have a security briefing uh, so we can make sure that uh, 
Hewell Hauser is okay to come in this place. And okay to leave. <laughs> Sir? And okay to leave. <laughs> well, you've got some great pictures on the wall of the, of the production of the bomber itself, and we are really looking forward to our morning here. Okay, Louie, we've got to cut off the camera for our briefing. Okay, time has passed. It is now, well, gosh, it's quarter to ten. We had quite a, a briefing in there. Quite a briefing. I'm with Bill Lawler, and Bill, your title is? I'm the general manager of the Northrop Grumman Military Aircraft Systems Division. And you're going to be kind of our tour guide I'll here. I'll be your tour guide. We're going to... We're going to see where all the B-2 bombers were finally assembled and tested uh, right before they're flown. And this is an amazing room right here, a big room. This is a million square feet of uh, space that is tailored especially to building and producing, testing, checking out uh, the B-2 bomber. Uh, it's rolled out of here and uh, flown away to, uh, to flight test. Now, I have seen pictures of this room absolutely stacked from one end to the other with B-2s. When you look out here now, it's empty. Mm -hmm. We had uh, this, this building starting over there and going down was absolutely full of B-2s. We built 21 B-2s here, uh, and they are built in an assembly line fashion. And as you finish one station, you roll the bomber forward to the next station, and it goes out the doors at the end of the station when they're all completed. And what's interesting about it is uh, security has told us that we can shoot all of this. Louis, let's, let's pan over right to the success sign over here because that's as far over as we can go because there's still a B-2 sitting right here. I can see it, <laughs> but we can't film it. There's a real live B-2 bomber that has been operational at Whiteman Air Force Base. The Spirit of Missouri is sitting at the end of the uh, factory floor here. It's back for some modifications, and that's true. We're looking at that airplane, uh, but because it's in a state of uh, incompletion right now, we've got some things off it that are really security uh, constraints, so we can't film it. So that's one of the uh, paradoxes of the... Uh, stealth business. But we can look at pictures of it. You can look at pictures of the finished product, but you can't look at pictures of it in, in the process of being assembled because some of the details would be that are classified uh, would be visible. You know, that's, I think, one of the things that has captured the imagination of, of, of those of us who like these kinds of things is the whole secrecy. Just the name of it itself, the mm -hmm. B-2 Stealth Bomber. It's kind of been cloaked in that from the very beginning, hasn't it? Oh, there's always been a mystique. Even among those of us who work on the program, there is a mystique about working on a black, we call them black programs. Uh, it can be a hardship on you and your family, uh, and, and sometimes it's an impediment to the way you want to get things done. But, but there's also an adrenaline about working on a program with that mystique. What do you mean a hardship on your family? Well, when we started this program, we couldn't tell them what we were working on. We were going to the, you go on a trip for a week and you couldn't tell your wife not only where you were going, why you were going, except that it was on company business. Now that implies a level of trust, <laughs> <laughs> and, but, it, but it also is, uh, you, you'd love to be able, you're proud of what you're doing, you can't tell your children, your friends, your wife, wow. that I'm doing, I'm working on one of the great projects in the history of aviation, and I can't tell anybody. Well, let's take a look, because we have a picture over here. Now, this was all built by the Air Force just for this project out here at Palmdale, right? Absolutely, and you won't see a sign that says the home of the B-2 bomber on this uh, sign. This was built as a stealthy facility, so everything was indoors. You could run engines, you build the airplane, you moved them between buildings. Uh, now this is where know. we started. This was That's where right. we had the briefing. Mm -hmm. Right. This That's is the, where we are right now. That is the main assembly building, and we're we're uh, upstairs on the balcony in that facility right now. And this this is the uh, paint hanger. This is where we pull the airplane in there, and you paint it, do its final paint coat. 
And this is the engine run dock, and that's, that's a, a state-of-the-art facility that was built to run engines and do all the checks of the B-2 without anybody knowing you were running engines on a B-2. So nobody in Palmdale knew any of this was going on. Well, they knew something big was going on, but they didn't know what. Wow. So, and the people in Palmdale, I think, are used to that because uh, a lot of uh, black programs have been run in Palmdale. So the populace here is used to strange things happening over here and uh, learn not to ask questions. Well, let's talk for just a minute about the bomber itself because it truly is revolutionary in many, many ways. I've, I've listened to the whole uh, uh, briefing this morning. Right. Lots of facts and figures. Maybe right. you can give it to me in, uh, in language that we can all understand and really, truly appreciate. Well, you don't have enough film for me to tell you everything I'd love to tell you, <laughs> but uh, the, the B-2 truly is revolutionary. Uh, the B-2 was uh, 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 evolved from, uh, from, as you know, the original flying wing designs of Jack Northrop in the, back in the 30s and, and the 40s. Actually, I've seen, we have mm -hmm. some footage that we'll be showing of Great. the flying wing, Great. which was, in its day, scoffed at by many people. Absolutely. And kind of put on the shelf. And then this initial design came back decades later. Absolutely. And as a matter of fact, even with all our technology, when we, before we flew this airplane the first time in 1989, there were some very reputable people who said it would not fly, we could not control a tailless airplane this big. Yeah. And uh, boy, have they been proven wrong. But the, the B-2 uh, is, is revolutionary in, in the sense that it was uh, the first time you had combined uh, stealthiness in, in an airplane of this scale. Wait a minute. Explain stealthiness to us. Well, stealthiness en encompasses uh, uh, low observability to sensors and, and all kinds of sensors. Our eye is a sensor. Our ear is a sensor. A radar is a sensor. An, an, an infrared uh, detector is a sensor. When low observable or stealthiness involves making that airplane hard to see to all those sensors. So you want it to be hard to see to the eye, you want it to be hard to hear, and you want it to be hard to see on a radar scope. Because you described one of these buildings a minute ago as stealthy. That's right. It was, <laughs> and stealthy means that, uh, that you don't notice it. Yeah. Literally, that you don't notice it. it with whatever you're looking at it with. So. We wanted to make the building so that when people drive by, they didn't get curious. And, and you, you, you don't want the bad guys to be curious when you're flying the B-2 around. Yeah. So stealthiness uh, is a design philosophy that, that causes us to do a lot of things different. You know, when it flew over mm -hmm. at the Over the Rose Parade, yes. it's the shape, mm -hmm. it's the color, it's all of these things combined, isn't it, that's really it captured everybody's imagination. And, and it captures the public, but you can't imagine how it captures us who worked on the program. You know, there are probably 40,000 people in the United States that worked on the B-2 at one time or another. And most of them have tears in their eyes when they see it fly. Yeah. I mean, it, it was like doing an Apollo program in secrecy, you know. <laughs> That's literally what it, I worked on the Apollo program and the space shuttle, and this was the same magnitude, except nobody knew about it until it was almost done. Well, aren't you glad now that you can talk about it? Oh, it's a tremendous relief. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trem you know, it was like opening a valve, and you just couldn't wait to go home and tell your friends, you know. Okay, the tour continues, and now we have come to the employee's cafeteria because I wanted to talk with some of the men and women who actually work on the B-2. And what are the restrictions in here? Well, everybody in here has got to be identified by a badge that's very distinctive in nature or under the escort of somebody who's badged. Uh -huh. And we couldn't allow you just to wander around in here because you don't have the badges and everybody is first going to look at you and then call for security because you're apparently loose and then out of control. And I can't just talk with the employee? 
Oh, sure you can. And, and anyone who's willing to talk to you uh, can do that about their job uh, within the uh, security constraints. But uh, as uh, Joe has just indicated, uh, your ability to move uh, unescorted and uh, out of ear range uh, is something that is not allowed. So you all have to listen to me talk well, with them? It's, it's not so much that we want to listen because we can listen afterwards, but for their own comfort, they need to know that we're allowing you to talk with them and film what's being said. So you think they might not even want to talk. Exactly. I mean, security is something that all of these people here are very concerned about. They've lived and with it, it for they've years. They've lived with it for years. Well, can we test this theory out? Sure. Come on, Louie. Now, you all stay back just a little bit. Okay. Fellas, how you doing? Fine. Fine. I, I've been told that you might not want to talk. Talk about what? <laughs> the B-2. Can't say nothing. You can't say anything? No. Not a thing? No. Can you say that you work on it? Yeah, say that much. Can you say what you do? I'm a surface prep ap applicator. I got you. Okay. Boy, you're right. They're kind of closed, tight-lipped. Now, you were smiling. You look like you could talk a little bit more well, than this I can't, guy. Uh, I can't say much about what I do, but I'm, I'm here eating lunch. Uh-huh. Well, I'm an aircraft painter. So you paint it? I paint, yeah. You can say that. <laughs> you paint the stealth bomber? No. I'm an aircraft painter. <laughs> Boy, they're clamming up on me just like you said they would. Well, uh, you know. He says he paint. He's an aircraft painter. That's right. And I said, oh, you paint the B-2. And, and he said, no, I paint airplanes. OK. You can't even say the word B-2? What's that? <laughs> I mean, this plane is wonderful. It's a great plane. Can Amazing. you remember the first time you saw it, what you thought about uh, it? Yeah. It was like nothing I ever seen before because yeah. I came from the F-18 so it was really unbelievable yeah mm -hmm. but you weren't really able to talk very much about it to your friends no. were you no not at all was not that all. hard to keep quiet uh not really because it was it was n nice to keep a secret you know like I know something and you know it was it was nice yeah, yeah. have you got any secrets that you can tell us now no <laughs> I'd have to kill you. <laughs> now, did you have to have a security clearance to work here? Yes, they had. In the provide, cafeteria. Right, because we, again, we work for Northrop. We're not an outside contractor, so we go through um, the same scrutiny that everybody else does. You know, different levels require, you know, um, different criteria, but, you know, the basis is uh, all the same for all of us because we have, uh, like you say, access to everyone, and a lot of us have to go to different parts of the plant. So, um, have yeah, you ever snuck in on the floor where they were making the plane? Well, I didn't have to sneak in, but I did go through where they were uh, constructing the plane. But I didn't have to sneak. You know, I just <laughs> had business out there. <laughs> but um, as someone that doesn't work on the plane, it certainly was uh, something to see. That's for sure. So you liked the idea of it being secretive? Oh, absolutely. Of course, of course. You always hear about. Uh, you know, all the UFOs and that kind of things. You really know that what's really going on is uh, another program's out there being developed, and, uh, you know, somebody's working on something. So, wait a minute. What you're saying then is a lot of these people who say they see a well, UFO. I can't speculate on that. Might but, have been uh, seeing the testing of something that looks as strange as the stuff. I would think that's a very rational assumption, yeah. absolutely. It's particularly in the uh, Antelope Valley uh, where we are today. Uh, with Rockwell, Boeing, uh, well, of course, uh, and Lockheed right across the street, uh, you always hear about uh, strange sounds in the night, yes. <laughs> well, we have finished our tour, and I'd like to thank you all very much for giving us this kind You're of welcome. an Thanks inside uh, thank tour. Thank you for being here. Of this Glad to you. very secretive place out here in Palmdale. We're actually standing in front of what you had described as a stealthy building. Sure. Nondescript, right? <laughs> very nondescript. But very high tech and very large. Yeah, that's where we were, inside that building. And this is, has been a wonderful first look at the B-2 and its facilities out here, the Northrop facilities in Palmdale, where it is actually put together and rolled off the assembly line. The question is, though, we still haven't 
I still haven't touched one. I still That's haven't right. seen one. Well, you're going to go over to Edwards now, and you can negotiate with the Air Force about test touching one. <laughs> Do you think we're going to? I would not put my money on you. <laughs> really? You think, you think I'll be able to talk them into it? Uh, you're pretty good at talking. I'm not going <laughs> to bet on that. Well, that's where we're going next. We're heading to Edwards Air Force Base in search of a B-2 that we can get really up close and personal with. And, and more power to you. I hope you do. <laughs> well, we have now left the Northrop facilities in Palmdale, and we're heading to Edwards Air Force Base. We've just gone through the first guard shack at Edwards, and we're about four miles away from the B-2 facilities here at Edwards. They're expecting us. We're a little bit early. It's about 11.15. We're supposed to be there at 12 o'clock. But hopefully this is where we're going to actually see up close a B-2 bomber. OK, we are here. And we have met up with Tech Sergeant Dan Tennant. And your position here? Um, NCIC of Information and Personnel Security. Security. We've heard that word before. Uh, you're going to hear it quite a bit today. <laughs> That's what I figured. Now, we've already gotten our badge here, right? Right. Uncleared visitor badges. Uncleared visitor badges. What does that mean? It means you're not cleared to the program. But we're cleared to go in and look around today. Only under escort. So you've got to stay with us the whole time? The whole time. OK, Louie, come on. We're cleared. Well, actually, we're uncleared, but we're, we're with him, right? You're with him, yes. OK, so we can go out here. And here are, are these, are these more, are you all waiting for us? Yeah, we are. Kewel Hauser. Bill Krauss, nice to meet and you. And you're with? CSC, Computer Sciences Corporation. Well, that, you haven't said the word security yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, photo security. Oh, that photo would be security, it. OK. Hi, Gary Hatch, Air Force Flight Test Center, Public Affairs. Public Affairs. Oh. Lieutenant Glenn Genovi, Fort Swap Test Group. And Darren Russell, photo security. Photo security. Now, what does photo security mean? Um, well, I guess basically it blocks your shots for you, things you can show, things you can't. We just kind of make sure steer you in the right direction when you do your interviews. So when we're doing the interviews out here by the B-2 today, there's certain things we can shoot and certain things we can't shoot. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. And you're going to tell us off the air what those things are because you can't tell them to us on the air. Is that right? Correct. Correct. And why can't you tell them to us on the air? Those are the rules. <laughs> OK. so. <laughs> We're going to cut the camera off, and you're going to tell us what we can't shoot. Yeah, that, pretty much. Right? And That's what is good. this for? Oh, this indicates to everybody else in the compound that you're unclear to the program, uh -huh. so everybody knows not to discuss classified information. So you're going to, you've got to be with us all day long with this? That's correct. Beeping like this? Well, when you're doing your audio, we don't have to have it beeping, but other, normally, yes. And it has, it's going to be flashing? Yes, always. Wow, I've never felt so welcome any place in my life, fellas. Thanks a lot. Now, how do we get in? Come on. How do we do this? Your badge? Yeah. In the back of your badge, there's a number. OK, you're going to enter that into, you're going to swipe your badge and enter that number in the keypad. OK, can we show that on the air? Yeah, go ahead. Well, no, we no. can't. Not the number? Just like Not this, the other. the other way? Yeah, face first, swipe. And then enter those numbers in the pound sign. OK, we have made it through turnstiles. We've gotten rid of our coats because we're now inside of uh, Bay 3. This is Bay 3. Yes. Now, aren't there supposed to be B2s inside here? Uh, only when they're in here for maintenance. So they're not here? Not at the moment, no. Where is one? Uh, we have one over here in Bay 2 North. So right through this door? Right through this door. We're going to get to go inside. And these look like the pilots right here. Hello. Hi, Mike here. Kewel nice Hauser, you. nice to meet you. Nice to Hi, you. I'm uh, Tony Grady, the commander for the 420 Flight Test Squadron. Mike Good is my operations officer, and we're here to show you something that uh, I understand you've been looking for for a while. We have been looking for it since about 7 o'clock this morning. Well, you know, you're very persistent. I congratulate you because you have survived where others have failed. That's right. 
And it's right behind this door, right? So what are we waiting for? Why don't we go see it? Now, does the guy with the red light have to be with us in here? Well, just went inside the door. Then the colonel there take care of you. But you're keeping the light on at all times? Yes. OK, so we're being escorted. You're being escorted so that uh, other people in the area will know that uh, we have visitors. OK. We're, at, we're going in. Let's go. Come Let's on. Go. Watch your step here, Louie. Oh, there it is. We hit the jackpot. We found one. Yes. This is the B-2, the stealth bomber, uh, here in the uh, 420th uh, Flight Test Squadron, part of the B-2 Combined Test Force. We are the folks that test the B-2. Our main job is to make sure that the contractor, Northrop, has provided for us what we contracted for. We make sure that the plane meets its requirements, and here it is. Okay, can we, now I'm, I'm scared to death because I'm not sure what we can shoot and what we can't. Is it all right to, to show it like this? Sure, show the whole thing, show the people how big it is, and perhaps maybe if we walk over towards it, they'll have a pretty good perspective on the, the size of, of, of how tall we are and what the airplane looks like, but um, we, we're happy to show you our airplane here. Um, you're looking at uh, the uh, engines on the left here. We've got the canopies kind of uh, covered oh, up. on the top. Right, that's the intake for the air for the engines there. And uh, we've got the, the cockpit uh, windshield kind of covered so that we won't do any damage to it while they're doing maintenance here. And you can see down in, in, uh, in front of the, uh, the aircraft, the tubes that are coming in, this is kind of a, a life support system for the aircraft with air and electricity while we work on it on the ground. Now, That's is this saying. plane flyable right now, or is it in here for a, a, a big overhaul, or what? This plane is flyable right now. We're doing merely uh, in-between uh, flight maintenance. Do you have anything that you want to add there, Mike? Yeah, because now your, your job here is to? Well, I'm in charge of operations. My basic job is uh, flight safety. Um, we want to make sure we get the job done, but we have to get it done safely, too. Um, uh, so we want to give uh, the guys at Whiteman, uh, the operational crews, the best airplane that we can. But we need to do it uh, not only on time and on schedule and uh, make it meet our cost uh, estimates, but we also need to do it safely. Now, so. the guys at Whiteman, that's where the B-2s are based, right, in Missouri? That's correct. They are the uh, operational uh, bomb wing, the 509th bomb wing there at, uh, at Whiteman Air Force Base. And uh, that's where they fly the, uh, the first operational birds are there. Now, have you ever been up in one of these things? Oh, yeah. yes, sir. I've I got mean, a button. Are you a pilot? Oh, I'm a weapon systems officer. We call ourselves uh, Wizzos. Uh, so we are... Wizzos? Wizzos, that's correct. Uh, we do, we're hired here to, uh, to do the armament testing, uh, dropping the bombs, to, do, to evaluate the radar systems and the terrain following radar systems. And that's where my uh, past uh, experience has been. Can we walk over? Sure, we can walk over here. This I'm so paranoid about this being close fine. to this thing. This is fine. As a pilot... Yes. How exciting is it to fly one of these things? It, it was exciting. I waited uh, a long time to fly the B-2, about eight years from the time I graduated from uh, test pilot school. What do you mean you waited? Well, uh, I had to do another, uh, a number of other jobs uh, when I came out of test pilot school. And they were all very good, but in a way they prepared me for this. The dream of every test pilot is to fly what we call a developmental aircraft a new aircraft. This is a new aircraft. Though the concept is old, let's just say that our computing capability along with some other developments in uh, aeronautical engineering have allowed us to overcome some of the problems associated with a flying wing. And of course Edwards Air Force Base where we are right now is named after Glenn Edwards who met his demise in a flying wing. And those very things that, uh, that caused him uh, a fatal accident have been overcome. Yeah. And this has been very exciting. The day that I flew this aircraft, um, I don't even think I can articulate it, but it was outstanding. Yeah, this is the uh, grandson of uh, Jack Northrop's initial uh, XB-35 air aircraft uh, that had uh, propellers uh, for uh, engines. Uh, he, they went to a jet engine design then with the uh, YB-49. This is 50 years ago. So this is uh, really the, uh, the grandson of the flying wing design. And as Colonel Grady said, it's the uh, processors, the computing uh, speed and capability 
uh, that we're able to use now to uh, help us with the flight controls to help us fly this thing because uh, manually we couldn't fly it. It's not, uh, it's not a stable machine. Now, what is it, for example, now he's standing over there in front of the plane. Yes. What is it that we, that is, uh, well, I guess you can't tell me what it is that's so secret about this plane, can well, you? Well, the, the secret thing about this plane is that it's very hard to see with radar. And uh, you can see the size of it. And uh, unfortunately, you're not here during our normal flying operations, but we fly with an F-16 on the wing all the time. It escorts us. We use it for safety chase. But get in your, your mind that that small F-16 has a bigger picture to radar than this big airplane. And that's, of course, what is the unique feature of the B-2, besides the fact that uh, you know, it doesn't have any vertical uh, stabilizers that normal conventional aircraft have, but it, it flies very well and it's very small on radar. You know, of course, how excited people get when they see this thing in the air, don't you? I mean, you've heard about what happened at the Rose Parade this year. Uh, we heard about what happened. Our, our brethren at uh, Whiteman Air Force Base uh, demonstrated the aircraft to the public, and that was very good. I, that, I had a good opportunity, uh, not this past year, but the uh, year before, I got to fly this at the Edwards Air Force Base Air Show. And uh, it was quite a, uh, quite a treat, because even from the cockpit, um, I was on the right side of the airplane, of course, and we made a pass, uh, kind of a knife pass along the crowd. And I was able to look out, and there was literally hundreds of thousands of people all pushed up to the rope watching, uh, watching this airplane come by. So, uh, What do you think it is? Is it because it looks like it's something from Star Wars? Uh, I mean, is it the shape? Is it the color? Is it the... What do you think? It, it's all of the above. It's a very impressive aircraft. And you're, you're correct. It looks very unique. Uh, when you look at the airplane, when it approaches you, it looks like a line in the sky. And then when it gets closer, it, uh, it just gets bigger. And then when it goes away, it disappears into a line. And it's, it's almost as if the aircraft is mutating before your eyes. And of course it's not, but you're right. It has a, it has a unique uh, shape and uh, it's very pretty as it flies. And where do you all rank in the hierarchy of pilots now that you all have you know, are connected with something like the B-2. What do you mean by hierarchy of pilots? Well, I mean, are you the envy of every pilot out there to be able to fly something like this? I don't think so. I think that uh, in the Air Force, uh, everybody has a job to do. Well, and, let's uh, don't be that political about it. I mean, not, it's not a matter this has got to be the most exciting job in the Air Force. It's not a matter of being political. It's a matter <laughs> of uh, being a test pilot. It's a privilege to fly a new airplane. We have a specific job to do, but Remember that our end goal is creating a uh, combat machine for the guys at Whiteman to have. The B-2's mission is to be able to put bombs anywhere on the face of the earth at any time. When the president picks up the telephone and says go, we need to make sure that the airplane's ready to go. So yes, we enjoy flying it, don't get me wrong, but our whole objective is to make the aircraft fully combat ready and ready to go. Well, of course, it's a very serious mission. I didn't mean to imply <laughs> it wasn't. But that doesn't mean it can't be give you a, a little rush of adrenaline when you take off oh, in this thing. Certainly it does. Certainly it does. Every time we fly, it's a, it's a privilege to fly. Okay, can I touch this plane? Uh, certainly, you can touch the plane. Well, don't say <laughs> certainly like that was a stupid question. <laughs> Believe me, I've had enough no's said to me today. Can we walk over here? Well, why don't we head towards the hatch? Because I understand we'll be going up into the cockpit. And, uh, you know, you have a hatch here with the ladder, and you can, you can touch the airplane. See? So what is this made of? Composite material. Composite material. What does that mean? Well, it's, uh, it, it's not like a conventional aircraft with, uh, say, aluminum uh, that, that's put together. Composite material is chemical material. And it, sometimes it involves fiberglass, carbon, other things that go together. But this material is specially made up and, and put together to form the aircraft. Is that uh, security, too, what it's made of? Sure, certainly. Certainly it is. I keep feeling like I need to nose around down in here a little bit more. We're going to go up? We're going to go up into the cockpit. Yes, we are. Okay, I'll let you all go up first. Okay. And, uh... Okay, well, we'll head on up in there, and uh, the crew going to turn on the light so we can see our way. Okay, boy, this is exciting. Now, this, this doesn't happen very often, does it, to be able to get to go up into the... Not often at all. So we're probably about the first one. Really? Really. 
How did we get clearance to do that? You're lucky. <laughs> okay, we're going up. Okay, boy, there is not, there's not much room in here. You know, we have a lot of precious space in uh, aircraft, and uh, so uh, uh, we load it with the equipment to do the mission. There's not a lot of room for creature comforts. So. so the plane just has two pilots, is that it? That's right. It was uh, originally designed with uh, the thought of possibly a, a third pilot to sit behind where you're sitting, but uh, right now it's just a two-pilot mission, and uh, that's where they'll do it out at uh, Whiteman. And how long can you stay in this plane at a time on a mission? We can stay in the airplane for a long time. Um, right now, our, our regulations allow us to fly for 24 hours. Of course, the aircraft would require refueling, but the, th this is a bomber. It's an intercontinental bomber. We can stay airborne as long as we can get gas. Yeah. Now, at Northrop, they showed us a picture of the cockpit all lit up. Yes. But we couldn't have the power on today could we in order to be in here That's for security correct. reasons for security reasons this as as you asked before this airplane is ready to go fly they're they're merely doing in between flight maintenance so we have an actual mission on this and and, and certain things that uh, though uh, we, we might like to show the public for national security it wouldn't be prudent now you've got the the windshield here is uh, is is covered right now and as we we talked to you before during the periodic maintenance in order to protect the windshield they've just got it covered up so give us all a feeling of what it's like to be sitting where you all are sitting right now and gliding out over the country well not gliding you're going <laughs> moving out over the countryside we, we hope we're not gliding <laughs> in, a, in a plane like this what what is the sense that it gives you the, the thing about this airplane is, yeah, we're sitting up here in this cockpit, but once you walk up the ladder, you, you kind of forget about what kind of airplane you have behind you. Uh, it's conventional stick and throttles on each side, and this, uh, this airplane flies like, uh, like any other airplane. Uh, it, it flies very nicely. It's very fluid. It doesn't and, uh, feel differently when you're flying this thing? Well, actually, just to uh, expand on what Mike has said, it, it's true. You know, airplanes fly, but uh, as a big airplane, uh, we don't have heavy stick forces or whatever. This is a very responsive aircraft. Northrop did an excellent job with the uh, flight control system, and it, it's just very responsive. Uh, it, it's almost like uh, when you're flying, you just think the airplane where you want it to go, and it, it goes there. It behaves very well. As Mike said, uh, most big airplanes uh, of uh, the, the other vintages would usually have a yoke in here, but we're, we're a fly-by-wire aircraft, and uh, we have a conventional stick and uh, it handles very well. The reason that it does that is because the mission can be very long and complicated. So you want the flying portion of the uh, aircraft to be fairly easy so as not to be a uh, added fatigue to the pilots as they are executing the mission. The B-2 requires a, a whole lot more of uh, the mental process. You have to stay on top of the systems, stay on top of where you are in the mission, um, monitor um, how you're proceeding along your, your programmed route and those sort of things. So there's a lot more mental activity that, that goes on to it. It's, it's a dream to fly. When you're up flying, uh, the, the hard part about it, as you can see, we don't have a lot of visibility. It's kind of difficult to see outside. And so uh, we, we don't get the sense of all that's around us just because of the sheer size of the aircraft and the, and the small windows that we have. But uh, it, uh, it is neat to look out the window. And when you're flying, you have to do that. You, you just have yeah. to do that. When, when we get going down low and fast, you, you really feel like you're home in the mail. It's a, you, you definitely get a, a feeling of the ground rushing past you. Now we're outside the plane, and I've hooked up with Master Sergeant Rick Kinsey. And your position here? I'm the production superintendent for B2 Compound. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm actually in charge of all the airplanes here on the compound. Uh, as far as any maintenance to be done on them, I direct the maintenance. Can we walk down in here? Sure. Come on, Louie, watch your step. What are these guys doing right now? They're, they're preparing for pre-flight right now. Uh, this airplane is going to fly tonight on a mission. So uh, they're just checking the airplane, make sure it's safe and flight. And, and how many men does it take to, to keep this plane functioning? Right now, we have 36 per personnel assigned to this airplane. Each B-2 out here has approximately 36 personnel. And how much specialized training do they have to have to be able to work on something like this? Uh, basically, because we're also working with Northup, we require Northup training and Air Force training. So there's 
actually quite a bit of training required to uh, ensure safety of flight. So this is serious stuff here. Oh, yes, it is. Very high tech. Okay, so they're working on... They're setting up for a pre-flight for this airplane uh, using a computer. So. And I understand that before we could shoot, where's the security guy? He's right over there. <laughs> before we could even shoot today, you had to cover up some things on the plane, right? Certain items on the plane, yes. So even though we're actually able to stand right here next to the plane, what the viewers don't realize is that there's some things that they can't see because you've covered them up because they're still top secret. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's certain things that can't be seen on the aircraft. Right, okay. Right. So there's still things about the plane that are that are that are mysterious that, that can't be shown on television. That are classified, yes. So we could get here but we can't see everything. Exactly. Do you think that's ever gonna change? Uh, maybe someday it will. But not while we're here. Not while we're here. <laughs> now we're getting over to the serious stuff here. Howdy. Your name? Sergeant Brown. Sergeant Brown. Nice to meet you, sir. And these are the big bombs. Mark uh, 84, 2,000 pound bombs. Because I think sometimes we forget the fact that this plane, we get so wrapped up in what the B-2 is all about, we forget that one of the main things it's all about is delivering weapons. payloads, weapons okay. against the enemy. What can they do? What can it, what can it do? Well, the B-2 will hold both these uh, RLAs. It uh, can hold up to uh, eight on each RLA. And it also holds uh, BRLAs which aren't on the trailers right now. now. I don't even know what you're talking That's about. It's a bomb rack as assembly, and they, that'll hold uh, up to 80 500-pound bombs. Really? And these are 2,000-pound uh, bombs. These are 2,000-pound bombs? Yes, sir. Boy, that, that, now that can do some serious damage. Sure can, yeah. <laughs> now, what is it like for you to work with a plane that can carry this configuration of, of ordnance? Well, uh, it's a fascinating job. Uh, maybe one of the fascinating things about it is, is the way we do load these. Uh, it's all done remote controlly, and we did like a, almost like an R RCU race car. We plug it into the wall. We use this here, engage it. The things will spin all the way around. They'll go sideways. We get them up underneath there. We lift them up and load them in that way. So it's all done from this. Remote control to load the plane, yes. You can't have anything moving now. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, these no, things no. aren't. They're not plugged in. They're not running. These things aren't uh, uh, live. No, these are inert. Okay. They're full of concrete. Okay, that's. <laughs> <laughs> that's <scary. laughs> Clicking that there. <laughs> well, I was just. <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering. Yeah. Uh, so, so what do you have them here for? Just for people like us when we come through and ask questions? No, or? we're going to be loading these here uh, next week. You you load concrete. We, we actually drop these off the plane to make sure that uh, everything works. And uh, we drop uh, several munitions, different types of munitions, to make sure that it does functionally work. Just dummies. Right. So we have loaded. Dead. We have dropped live because you have to make sure that the live ones actually work, too. So it's okay for me to go over here now and... You can hit on them all you want. They're not going to do anything. Boy, I'm feeling secure on the outside, but inside <laughs> I'm dying right now. No, those are full of concrete. They're, they're not going to do anything. I wouldn't let you hit on a live one. <laughs> well, this has certainly been uh, a lot of fun for us. We finally got to see one of these things. And i got to tell you, from the reaction of the crowd at the Rose Parade and from the, the interest level that, that all of us have in this plane, I think the Air Force uh, should have, I think this plane should be more visible to the public because it really is an exciting aircraft to see. Well, I think the Air Force has been as visible with the aircraft as was needed. Sometimes when it takes longer to see something, you appreciate it more. Boy, are you going to run for office when you get out of the Air Force? <laughs> you did that very well. No, no. All in a day's work. We're just happy. We're happy that you were able to come. We're proud of our aircraft. We're proud of uh, what uh, Northrop has done and the whole B-2 team. Got to remember something. 
The United States was first in the aviation industry, and this is a testament that we're still first in the aviation industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure having you on to uh, show off our airplane here, and, it's, and as we said earlier, it's a real pleasure to fly this airplane. Thank you. Thank you for coming, and uh, you can come back. Visiting with Huell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.